too little repetition and and here i'm also going to add too much repetition as well so there is a number of repetition that helps a person to be able to follow a movement and 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 it becomes second nature to them it helps to correct their technique because the more they the more they do it the more they do it you correct the technique you help them you push them it becomes a workout they get to understand what a lot of players don't understand is that as you play at higher and higher levels, players aren't doing anything that different. What they're doing is the simple things, the things that we can all do, but they're doing them perfectly, quickly, and consistently. You can take a good first touch. I know that you can. But can you take 10 out of 10 perfect first touches while under pressure, and then make a good pass quickly with your second touch, or move into space at speed? No? then that's why you're not at that level yet. It's not because you can't do some crazy skill move. It's because you need to be better at doing the simple things perfectly, quickly, and consistently. All right, uh, I'm sure you're wondering why, why are we watching this video now? Uh, basically, we're watching this video because this video reminded me of the industry that we are in and 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 this video is about the super coach and he is he is sharing what makes professional soccer players professional soccer players what makes them to reach that level and and as he's sharing that he's actually saying look you to become a better soccer player you actually need to do the simple things right you know you have to be able to do good first touches every time you receive the ball you have to be able to run into space at speed you have to be able to to receive the ball and make a quick pass whilst you are under pressure because at that level everybody's feet there will be pressure and the level at which you apply things has to be a very very high level and it doesn't mean that you have to be the guy that can take the ball and put it on the neck and run it inside. You know those guys that, 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 that do freestyle football? Yes, you don't have to know all those things. You have to know the basics, control the ball, pass it to the next person. You see a target, you shoot, control the ball in the box or shoot first time. Be able to do those things. Those things makes you a professional footballer. Okay, so as I saw this video, I thought of our industry and I looked for evidence and I found evidence on this manual. Something that relates to what is spoken about. This is the ETA group exercise manual and they've got 10 choreography pitfalls and I'm going to share them on this, uh, on this video. That's what I'm going to be sharing. And also these things, they say the same thing that he says on the other side. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you right now, but let's start the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fitness Podcast with Mzi. Mnagendi gumzi anda wako mnyazi, usangu, unzita, ufagate, unyandeni, umkapisa, umakapisa ngento zake, umwanwa, nyana kampumelelo, kakwebani, kakelo, kamshaba, kankomonye, ikaya lesema konukwebeni, ikwesi. Umshaba wa makakati. Aya, uh, where's that thing? Where's that thing? I only, I only need this one. I don't want to press the wrong one. Let me check. There you go. Yes. yes. Right. Dim low. Okay. So yes, this is this is what we're going to be talking about today. It's not going to be a very long video. We're bringing the evidence so good to become a good instructor. You don't have to do the most difficult combos this goes to everybody whether you are a new instructor whether you are an old instructor whether you are an international instructor 
it doesn't matter who you are to become a better instructor you do not have to know difficult choreography now let's go uh, i'm going to first go to the manual then after that i'll also share what i wrote after i saw that right <laughs> choreography pitfall number one choreography too complex right if your movement is too complex that means that a lot of people will not be able to follow on time and then instead of it becoming a workout it becomes a dance class where it takes people i think it takes people a couple of weeks to learn and, and master choreography and as a group exercise instructor you only have one hour to teach this to the people and and this means that and most of the time instructors are lucky because they get to practice this over and over again and then go and present it and these people must catch it one hour in other situations within 20 minutes right so that choreography cannot be too complex if you want people to work out music too fast too slow or too loud so if your music is too fast or it's too slow or it's too loud it also is a distraction in your class right i definitely will not dive deep onto this i'm not i'm not going to lie and, and pretend to be a person that understand how the brain functions but i also know with myself that when the music is too loud sometimes it kind of distracts me but it can be loud but you know sometimes it has to be very balanced that that's one thing I, I i believe and then if it's too slow it bores everybody and if it's too fast we can't complete doing our movements we always punch half watch any video that's got music that's too fast props to to the people who teach with music that is at the right pace i'll use the right pace but there's not yes there are recommended paces of music for each class but uh, 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 sometimes you can make it faster or a little bit slower as long as people are able to do you can see you can tell you can feel it also and with experience you get better at it inconsistent phrasing so if if, if your music is actually i don't even think this is music maybe you are the instructor how you you phrase the music phrasing that means how you interpret the music if you can't interpret the music very well then it makes it difficult this is a simple thing you have to do it very well and there are levels to phrasing there is phrasing of just knowing the beat there is phrasing of knowing a full 32 there is phrasing of understanding the the uh, 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 the, the the highs and lows your 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 your, your, your uh, what do they call this thing others they call it a downbeat but it's not a downbeat it's actually a a break in the music and recognizing the chorus and being able to share what's happening with the class in terms of how you make them feel when those things are are, being, are, are happening those dynamics of the music there's phrasing of understanding the entire mix from the beginning till the end and phrase the whole thing do what is necessary when it's necessary understanding where the warm up starts and where it ends when you start punching in a kick class where you start doing your movements there is also that type of phrasing so there are levels to phrasing uh, and, and 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 each level obviously you get better at each level and it goes back to we all know how to do the first touch we all know a 32 but can you consistently find the right 32 to change your music where the correct dynamics are in everything that's the levels that we they are talking about on that video as well lack of planning and uh, obviously if you don't have a plan uh, you won't be able to present your class so that also means you know you should know where you're going to start doing what you should know where you're going to start punching you should know for how many times and 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 you know all those kind of things how many movements do you want to do what movements do you want to do more or less and then that way it's easy for you when you get to the stage you don't have to think and try to remember what movements you are going to do if you've already planned which i'd say props to a lot of guys uh, here in south africa we really do plan uh, lack of variety of course guys uh, i don't care 
who you are or where you're from. You cannot teach the same class the same way every time. You have to change. You know, you have to change. You have to change. You can't make us do side kicks and cross punches only. You know, you have to give us more. Give us hooks, give us uppercut, give us matches, give us that. All these things within the walls. <laughs> Poor communication and chewing skills. Again, simple thing. How can you communicate? Can you consistently chew and consistent? Chewing is actually communication. Can you consistently communicate with your class throughout the class until the end without making, without being poor at it, without making a lot of mistakes? You know, too little repetition. And, and here I'm also going to add too much repetition as well. So there is a number of repetition that helps a person to be able to follow a movement and, and, and it becomes second nature to them. It helps to correct their technique because the more they, the more they do it, the more they do it, you correct the technique, you help them, you push them. It becomes a workout. They get to understand the, how this is done because they see it over and over again. They do enough practice then, yeah. So too much is when now it's going to be too long. We do the same thing for too long and like for too long. <laughs> Yeah, there is that point where you're like, hey, you're breaking, you're breaking, you're breaking, you're breaking, and he keeps on taking you there, or she. Uh, not facing participants enough. That's another simple, simple thing when you're teaching guys all the time, if you can face the people, 10 when it's necessary. So all the time, most of the time, face the class. I always get distracted when a class is starting and a person would look the other way and Okay, MZ, shut up because you talk to a cool. Tula, tula, so tet, so tet, MZ, and so tet. Fun, are your boy? <laughs> so yeah, uh, not really. It's important, guys, to 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 face to face the people when we are training them. Unbalanced left and right. Of course, guys, you have to teach both sides. Be it you are teaching symmetric or asymmetric uh, uh, combinations, do enough. If you are doing asymmetric, do the right, finish. If you did eight times this side, come back and do eight times this side. It always helps having music that is phrased correctly because now you don't even have to count because you know when you reach here, it's eight times. And last one, lack of correct technique, posture and body alignment instruction. So if you cannot execute movements properly and your posture is bad and your body alignment is bad, then you are not going to have a good choreography. So those are the 10 things, guys. Uh, I would love to repeat them, but I won't. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to write them somewhere or anything, but if you want to get them again, please go through the video again and understand those choreography pitfalls. Now I can put the manual away. So, so those are the choreography pitfalls. Those are the simple things that you have to learn and master. Just like soccer players have to learn how to do a first touch right every time. Now I'm going to another, another, another point, some points that I've made uh, after I saw this. And I'm going to read what I what I wrote. And 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 so here I I I said when I was sharing this, I said mindset of a fitness professional. Okay, that's a heading. Mindset of a fitness professional. Being a fitness professional is not about doing fancy crazy moves. It's about doing simple things perfectly consistently. That's exactly what they are saying on that video. So I got this from that video. Number one, simple choreography. Make your choreography simple, perfect. Shh. Did I say perfect choreography? I don't know what I meant. I think I meant something else here. Oh, I believe that I meant to say perfect music interpretation. 
that's what I wanted to say because that's what I was thinking because I see it's not here. So I meant to say perfect music interpretation as the second one. The third one, perfect technique. I used perfect on purpose. It can never be perfect. This means that we all have to keep on working hard. You always have something to work on at all times. There is no way you are going to master it. You have to make it better and you can always make it better. And perfect coaching, how you communicate, it's also written there. It has to be perfect. Even technique is also there. It's funny. Even music is also there. And I didn't read that before I wrote this. And I didn't really have that in mind when I was writing this. Excellent engagement with participants. You know, engage with your people as you are teaching. Talk to them. And create performance. Uh, by performance, I just mean that when you are done, especially when you are done with your choreography, the, we call it the finale, being able to demonstrate that finale. So these are the things, guys, that I I wanted to share today. On episode 21, yeah, this episode, I think I've got about five topics that I could not really start, and, and that is why the, this episode is late anyway. Right, guys, on that note, that's all I wanted to share. So I want you to know that you do not have to be the best dancer to be able to teach a good aerobics class. It's about doing simple things perfectly and consistently. Yeah, I'm seeing. On that note, guys, we are done. I'm out of here. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with other people. Like, don't listen to this as if they are chunji. Like, actually do it. I'm waiting. Okay, hope you're done. I love you. I'm out of here. Peace. Episode 21.